Good morning, I'm Kristen Valetti and welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Wednesday, March 13th, 2013. Here's your SiliconANGLE Daily Roundup. According to YouTube, Google Now could be heading to iOS devices in the near future. A Google Now for iPhone and iPad promotional video was spotted on YouTube yesterday, although it has since been removed. Comparisons to the original Google Now video have led many to believe that the new video was authentic. Currently only available on Android devices, Google Now is an extension of Google Search that attempts to search and provide relevant information to users before they ever request it. It's possible that the video was a fake, but with Google's preference of pushing its technology to as many platforms as possible, there's a good chance that we'll see Google Now on iOS devices soon. There will be no more forced late nights at work for Apple employees in France. In response to a lawsuit by a group of national labor unions, a Paris court banned Apple from requiring employees to work past 9 p.m. and insisted that the technology company pay the labor unions 10,000 euros in damages. According to French labor laws, businesses cannot force employees to work between the hours of 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. unless they can prove that doing so is necessary to maintain economic activity or to provide social services. Apple stores close at 9 p.m., but employees had been required to stay as late as 11 p.m. to close everything down. No word yet on what kind of appeal options, if any, Apple might have. Jeff Bezos, Prime Strategy, is paying off for Amazon.com. The e-commerce company doesn't disclose official numbers for its Prime program, but using data from a market survey report, analysts now believe the number to be higher than 10 million. That's only 4% of Amazon's active users, yet they account for nearly 10% of purchases and contribute to about a third of the company's operating income. Amazon Prime members enjoy perks such as free shipping and access to Amazon Prime Videos, a service that competes with online streaming companies like Netflix. The success of Prime is linked with the success of Amazon's Kindle Fire tablets, as the device is a constant reminder to users of how easy it is to order products from Amazon, many of which are available for next day delivery. This was Bezos' plan, and so far it's a calculation that's adding to Amazon's bottom line. Attention celebrity tweeters, Big Brother is watching. Government regulators at the Federal Trade Commission have updated the agency's disclosure guidelines. Individuals who endorse or even mention products and who receive compensation for doing so may do so in very specific ways. The example tweet given by the FTC from Julia Stars shows this extremely awkward and cumbersome message. Add, shooting movie beach scene, had to lose 30 pounds in six weeks. Thanks, Fataway Pills, for making it easy. Typical loss, one pound per week. Twitter would be a remarkably different landscape if all endorsed tweets read this way. It's not clear how the FTC would police all the posts made on various social media platforms. But with the law on the books, rule breakers are tweeting at their own risk. The Computer Fraud and Abuse Act is under fire. A group of startups and innovators sent a letter to the House Judiciary Committee urging them to modernize the CFAA. Under the existing law, Aaron Swartz, the co-founder of Reddit, was being prosecuted by the Justice Department for hacking MIT's computer network and downloading millions of academic articles from the online archive. He faced 13 felony counts, which, if convicted, could have resulted in several decades of prison. Earlier this year, before his case went to trial, Aaron took his own life. This tra tragedy resulted in the technology community giving the CFAA closer scrutiny. The law, originally designed to protect government computers, now covers almost any computer and criminalizes accessing computers without authorization, even when it's not done maliciously. The letter acknowledges the need to personalize malicious hacking, but states that the law goes too far. Penalize malicious hacking. As of yet, there's been no official response from the House Judiciary Committee. Dropbox has announced some upgrades to its desktop client. The new updates allow for quick sharing of files and will help users keep up to date in real time with the service. The most significant of the updates involves an easier way to share files with a link directly from the Dropbox desktop menu, cutting down the steps needed to send content to others. The Dropbox menu has also been improved to accept files more simply. Notifications will be sent out in real time and users will be able to decline invitations to files and folders from the desktop as well. 
The real-time notifications will be sent to both Dropbox iOS and Android applications. These recent improvements may further hint that Dropbox may be heading towards an IPO within the next 24 months. The Federal Communications Commission has approved the merger between T-Mobile and Metro PCS. In a statement issued yesterday, FCC Chairman Julius Janikowski said allowing the two companies to join forces will benefit millions of American consumers and help the U.S. maintain the global leadership in mobile it has regained in recent years. Word first broke that T-Mobile's parent company, Deutsche Telekom, was interested in acquiring Metro PCS last year. The merger will provide T-Mobile with resources to grow its LTE services, allowing Metro PCS customers to access 3G service via T-Mobile's GSM network, while Metro PCS's CDMA spectrum will be repurposed for LTE. Microsoft is gearing up to market Nokia's upcoming Verizon flagship smartphone, the Lumia 928. Known previously as Laser, the Lumia 9, this Lumia 920 variant will include some significant changes that make it a new standalone device. Nokia will switch to aluminum for the 928 with a xenon and LED flash combination for the 8 megapixel PureView camera. The 928 will launch a 4.5 inch OLED display and support for simultaneous voice LTE. Nokia's new flagship will also reduce the weight and thickness compared to the Lumia 920. The Lumia 928 handset is set to launch in April on Verizon. Legislation will be introduced in the California Senate on Wednesday that could change the way we think about the college experience. The legislation would require the state's public colleges and universities to give credit for faculty-approved online courses taken by students who are unable to register for oversubscribed classes on campus. There's a strong likelihood that the new requirement will pass, and if it does, it would be the first time state legislators have instructed public universities to grant credit for courses that were not their own, including those taught by private vendors who are not colleges or universities. Daryl Steinberg, president of the Senate, says, We want to be the first state in the nation to make this promise. No college student in California will be denied the right to move through their education because they couldn't get a seat in the course they needed. Governor Jerry Brown has been a strong proponent of online education as a means to reduce college costs. And under the legislation, some of the eligible courses would likely be free, massive open online courses. This would be a big change acknowledging that colleges aren't the only ones who can offer college courses, said Burek Smith, the founder of Straighter Line. It means rethinking what college is. And that's your SiliconANGLE Daily Roundup for Wednesday, March 13th, 2013. For complete information on tech innovation, tune in daily to Newsdesk here on SiliconANGLE TV.